Hi, welcome back to Q&A with Dr. K. The question today has to do with my opinion on proven plant-based blood thinners. Now, why would you want to thin your blood? Well, let's look at the mirror image of that. Thank heavens for blood clotting. Uh, boy, we sure <laughs> like to have the ability to clot our blood. Think of all the times you not only cut yourself, but you bang your elbow and you bruise uh, the skin and you tear some blood vessels and the blood bleeds into the skin. You get that, uh, that purple bruise there. Well, you sure want that vessel to seal up and stop bleeding. Otherwise, you wind up with a big hematoma uh, or you bleed into a joint like the uh, hemophiliac people do that uh, uh, have a trouble clotting their blood. Um, so blood clotting saves our lives. You fall and you hit your head. Boy, you sure don't want to bleed into your brain. Uh, it's wonderful to be able to clot your blood. It's absolutely life-saving. So why in the world would you want to inhibit that? Well, there's a few medical conditions where blood clots can cause real problems. Uh, one is the condition called atrial fibrillation. And, and normally when the heart beats, uh, you have two, two, you have upper chambers of the heart, the atria that contract and squeeze blood into the main pumping chamber, the ventricles, and the ventricles then contract. So you have atrial contraction, ventricle, ventricular contraction, atria, ventricle, atria, ventricle. And that's the way the heart's supposed to work. Yay and bl moving blood does not clot. And so as long as that blood is moving, there's no need to inhibit your blood clotting. But there is a condition called atrial fibrillation where those upper chambers, instead of pumping strongly, uh, they just quiver, uh, they fibrillate. And as a result, the blood that's in those chambers does not get uh, propelled down into the ventricle pumping chambers that just remains in the atria while the muscle fibers are quivering and stagnant blood will clot. And once that blood clots in the atrium, you get a bunch of clots uh, up in the, that chamber, uh, they can, uh, if the atrium begins to contract, even just a little bit, pieces of clot can break off, go down to the ventricle and then out uh, the, uh, into the aorta and then right up into the brain. Uh, and people can get these dreadful strokes uh, because of the clot in their atria uh, due to atrial fibrillation. Um, uh, there's another condition if you've uh, had big blood uh, clots, say down your pelvis, your leg veins, and a big piece of that clot has broken off and traveled up and gone out to your lung, and you wind up with a pulmonary embolus, uh, that can kill you. Uh, and it certainly causes pain. You lose lung function that way, but a big pulmonary embolus can be fatal. So, so you don't want to mess around with blood clotting conditions. And uh, for that reason, the doctors, when they diagnose, these conditions uh, will often prescribe uh, anticoagulation. Uh, it used to be uh, with the medication called warfarin, uh, but nowadays uh, there are other uh, uh, medications uh, like Eliquis, et cetera, that, uh, that inhibit blood clotting. Now, uh, people say, I don't want to be taking uh, these pharmaceutical drugs. There must be something natural that does the same uh, effect. And it's true, yes, there are substances that will inhibit blood clotting in the laboratory, will, will slow down the rate at which those clots form. Um, uh, foods like ginger, uh, garlic, pineapple, cayenne, uh, all of these have uh, blood, uh, it, it will, will inhibit blood clotting. I really do not like using the term blood thinners. The blood does not get thinner. It, it is still a viscous liquid. It does not flow uh, more easily when you're on these medications. Your blood doesn't really get thinner. These are anticoagulants that inhibit either the, uh, the clumping of platelets, which is the first step in forming a clot. And that's what aspirin does. And those kind of similar agents, there they are, they are antiplatelet agents. But then uh, there's a whole cascade of chemical reactions uh, that are needed to actually form an, a solid clot. Uh, and that's what uh, warfarin and eliquis and these other um, uh, anticoagulant agents do. And that's where the cayenne, the garlic, the pineapple, et cetera, also can have their effect. So is it, and, and there's a very popular one called natto, which uh, uh, is also a plant-based uh, substance. And people say, well, I'll just take my natto and my pineapple and uh, I'll call it a good day. Uh, the problem with that, and, and I wish that's all you needed to do. The problem with relying on these, quote, natural anticoagulants 
are one, you don't know how much anticoagulant property is in a given piece of garlic or in a given piece of pineapple. And will that, as you buy different garlic heads and different pineapples, will you be getting the same amount of anticoagulant property in each different uh, clump of garlic, each pineapple, each shake of cayenne? Uh, so the, the do dosage potency will vary. And how does your body uh, deal with this? Uh, uh, how fast does your liver metabolize garlic oil or uh, the pineapple enzymes? It's, it's different uh, in everyone. Uh, it may vary in your same body. Uh, your liver may metabolize garlic oil differently one day than the other, depending on the other foods that you've eaten, depending on what microbes in your gut uh, sending products up to your liver. There's so many variables. Uh, starting with a uh, an effect that is unknown to begin with. I mean, how much anticoagulation can you uh, depend upon from a shake of cayenne and a clove of garlic all the way around? Since you are dealing with a potentially life-threatening situation here, clots in your atrium are no joke and not to be ignored. Uh, you might be familiar with uh, the senator from Pennsylvania, um, uh, John Fitterman, uh, got a walloping stroke uh, that took him out of his uh, duties in the Senate. Uh, uh, why? Because he didn't want to be, he had atrial fib, but I'm not going to, I'm, I'm a big, strong guy. I don't need to be taking that rat poison. Uh, and he should have been uh, anticoagulated there. When I say rat poison, warfarin is also used uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, products that, uh, that kill rats. They eat so much of it. Uh, the rats that they bleed to death inside. So that's where warfarin gets its name or its bad reputation. But it's actually a very uh, adjustable drug. But nowadays, uh, because you're on warfarin, there's a question whether uh, eating green vegetables might diminish the potency of the drug. But nowadays, uh, the, the new drugs like Eliquis, et cetera, uh, are not affected by your diet. So that's one reason they are more preferable. Um, and I just had a dear friend uh, known for years and years, just had a massive stroke and it killed him. Uh, again, I suspect he was an, I don't want to take that rat poison stuff. Uh, do not mess around with atrial fibrillation. Uh, it, it can bite you severely as can uh, a major blood clot in a leg vein, pelvic vein. If you've had a pulmonary embolus, you want to be anticoagulated for a few years. This is not necessarily lifetime medication. I really want to, um, uh, to emphasize this. Uh, if you've had a stent put in your artery, um, often the cardiologist will uh, put you on uh, one of these anticoagulants and they'll just leave you on it long-term. Don't need to be on it long-term. A year, year and a half, uh, that's usually all that's required if you've just had a stent put in. And uh, if you uh, no longer have atrial fibrillation, or, or at least if the clot has resolved in your leg and the scan shows there's no more clot, the ultrasound uh, echo of your heart shows there's no more clot in the atrium, uh, after a while, they can be discontinued. It's not necessarily lifetime medication. Uh, but I'd urge you as much as I would I'd love to be able to tell you, uh, eat two cloves of garlic, uh, and a shake of cayenne and a piece of pineapple every day, you'll, you'll be fine. Can't tell you that. Um, do, do not mess with these uh, uh, very potentially lethal uh, situations. So uh, uh, the, follow your doctor's advice. Uh, choose the best anticoagulant for you. Uh, and uh, But keep talking to your doctor. Do I need to be on this forever? Uh, and uh, when can we uh, talk about getting off this medication? I think that's a responsible way to use these medications. So uh, uh, welcome to medicine in the 21st century. Uh, but that's the best idea, advice I have for you. Uh, given